There's a big old pond situated in the state of Louisiana where all those old Cajuns live that's one of the swampiest, fishiest looking places you've ever seen. We're going there on this week's episode and guess what? I think we're going to catch some and show you how you can catch them as well. Going to be a lot of fun this week. Glad you're along with us from Louisiana. Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. <laughs> You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southeast region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Hey, I'm really pumped to have you along with us today because we're taking you to a great fishing lake that I've only been to one time. This is the greatness of Darbone Lake. It's situated about a half hour north of Ruston, Louisiana, and it has got all kinds of fish swimming around in it. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. We've got the Bass Tracker Pro Team 195 already launched and ready to roll right here. It's the perfect boat for this lake because it's loaded with old cypress knees and stumps, and this thing rides really light right over the top of those with no problem. Check this out too. This is a great new place. I've never been here before, but we're staying at Darbone Point. You can see the beautiful little cottages and cabins right on the shore of Darbone Lake. We'll show you more of that a little bit later. Got a lot to do today. I've got two strategies working. I'll explain that in just a minute. Also in the next half hour, we're gonna be taking you around the region for all your local latest fishing reports, both fresh and saltwater, from our expert team of insider reporters from your local lakes, rivers, and bay. Right now, I'm taking the Tracker Pro Team 195 out on Darbone Lake, get things started. We get you started back at the FSN Studios with your weekend planner. According to the Salooner tables, you could see excellent fishing action this weekend at the lake. Look for peak morning hours to begin very, very early, and again at 229 on Saturday afternoon and 318 p.m. on Sunday. Expect the sun to rise at 619 and set at 835 and evenings will be bright with a full moon on Friday. We've got fishing reports from around the area on the way. Plus, we'll talk catfishing on this week's Ask the Pro. Back in a bit. So here's my game plan. We're gonna idle out here, get just off the channel, and try some crappie fishing first. I've got my Be Ready rod holders. We're gonna set those up, get some long poles out, explain all that to you. We're gonna do some long lining, see if we can catch a couple of these big, legendary Darbone crappie. Then, if that goes well, we'll do a little bass fishing later on in the show. Stay with us, quick break, word from our sponsors, and we'll be back to get it all started. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lou's. Fueled by passion, driven by innovation. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue Bass Baits and Bobby Garland Crappie Baits, the leaders in soft plastic lures innovation. And Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. All right, well, chunk. That is a Louisiana special right there. Fish on, yes. Oh, it had a hit and uh, that was weird. He kind of hit it and he didn't have it. And then I picked it up and he slammed it again. All right, hey, welcome back everybody. We're on Lake Darbone today. Oh yeah, look at this. That's what we came here for. Hey, look at that. All right, well, chunk. That is a Louisiana special right there. Little old stroller right there. I'll show that to you at the end, but uh, oh, I love you guys. Mm, 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 mm. You are such a, look at that, big old fat belly. They're eating shad out here, tons of shad. You can actually see the bait fish on the graph and uh, we're not keeping them today and that's too bad because that, as Wally Marshall says, would make the grease stink, but we're putting them back today. So back that buddy goes. You can see I'm using my Motor Guide XI5 trolling motor and I've got four rods out. I've got a 14 footer all the way out and I've got an 11 footer back in here. So I'm covering some water there and then I've got a 14 and an 11 on the other side. And I'm using these 1 8 ounce Moglo jig heads. And I figured out that if I can go 
about 0.8 miles an hour. And I can set my Lowrance Elite Ti up to show me speed over ground. It's a great way you can just fan out, troll around, set your trail on your fish finder and see where you've been and just kind of mark your trail along. And if you catch a couple, you can double back, circle through that area, and see if you can catch some more. Hey, let's get you fishing in lake reports from an insider reporter right where you live. How much value do you place on your tackle storage? Let me show you the best way I've found to protect your investment. That's the bait coffin from Bass Mafia. Your stuff won't get wet, it won't get damaged for as long as you own it. Check them out at mafiaoutdoors.com. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Tennessee and Kentucky Fishing Report. Got a whole lot of stuff to cover, not a lot of time, let me get after it. In Kentucky right now, Barron River is the place to be. Big bass and lots of them. If I were gonna fish at night in Kentucky, I'd go to Lake Cumberland, no doubt. Go see Greg at Lake Cumberland Outdoors and he will hook you up with where, when, why, and how. If you're gonna fish at night in Tennessee, Percy Priest, Center Hill, and Dale Hollow. Big smallies on a spinnerbait, not a lot more fun than that. In the daytime, I'm going back to Chick like I always do because that's where big ones live. Otherwise, Tennessee, uh, I would go to Barkley, maybe uh, Tennessee or Kentucky for that matter, so you win on either hand. And the northern end of Kentucky Lake's really hot right now. The offshore bite's good, deep diving crankbaits, Carolina rigs, big jigs. Kind of elementary, but it's what we do here and we catch a lot of big bass. Um, Real Foot Lake, as always, Gibson County Lake, really good. Guys, it is an awesome time to be on the water in Tennessee and Kentucky. God bless. 0.7, 0.8 miles an hour, there's one right there. All right, I got no, I'll come on this side. Oh, that's a good pull. Good pull. All right, well, we've got another one. As you can see, uh, if you're gonna come to this lake, if you're gonna navigate, if you're gonna drive your outboard engine, you've gotta stay in, inside these poles. They're marked with green and red on them. Everywhere else, you're likely to hit a stump. Look at this crappie here. Another good one right there. All right. And, uh, same thing if you're gonna long line like this, if you don't want to get hung, you pretty much need to stay along the edges of these places that don't have as many stumps. And I'm, I'm actually long lining in open water right now, but I'm just off the channel. So the channel is literally, in fact, I don't know if you can see these poles right here, but there's two poles, that's the channel. And uh, I'm just no more than 20, 30 yards off the channel and just going up and down that channel right where it drops off. I'm in about 11 to 15 feet of water. And these fish are right there off the edge of that channel. They can run off in that deep water, run up on the side to feed. Good one right there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We've showed you the big Darbone crappie that you can catch. That's just a big toad right there. Showed you a couple of those. We caught several more. We're going to take a quick break right here. When we come back, we're going to go bass fishing. See what the bass are like in Darbone. See what we can show you there as well. So stay with us. This one, oh, I hate to do this. Oh, this kills me. Barely got him hooked. Got him. All right, look at that dude. Fish on, fish on. Got him, got him. Look at that right out here in that grass. Good one, good one. He's barely got him hooked, got him. All right, look at that dude. Man, that dude rolled up there and ate that rattling crawler. How about that? There's your Darbone, beautiful green looking, gold looking fish. What a great fish right there for you. Darbone, folks. All right, well, go right over here and put him back where you can watch him swim away in that gold colored water. Everything around me looks like it ought to hold a bass. I'm telling you, look, look right here. See all this green flowery stuff? You just barely see it. Little bit of scattered stuff. That's where he was, right in the edge of that green vegetation growing up. It looks like maybe the beginnings of some little tiny lily pads, but I'm telling you there's, see those, there's reeds. Behind that, there's cypress trees. Behind us, there's a huge cypress forest back here. Just going down here and fishing all the obvious looking stuff, just regular, easy bass fishing. There's, this is not highly technical. 
and uh, not anything really difficult about this. I'm going to do some more of it though while you're checking out your local fishing reports. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolinas report. This week brought to you by the Dead Dog Saloon. Remember, Grand Strand area, Georgetown, South Carolina. Make sure you come to Merle's Inlet and check out the Dead Dog Saloon. We've got it all right here on the Marsh Walk. Open seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Here, it's always about the food, the view, and the music. And let's talk about the water behind me, the salt water today. Two things most importantly, the reefs, the nearshore reefs get loaded up with fish. My favorite is the flounder. Second favorite is the spade fish. Right now you get out for flounder on those near shore reefs, those live bottoms, you're gonna have a great time right now targeting. What I like to do is either two things, a big Carolina rig, making sure I've got a three quarter or one ounce egg sinker to get that thing down quick, get it on the bottom, using live mullet, mud minnows, in the artificial realm, I love a jig head with a gulp shrimp. Works great out there. You're gonna have to deal with some predator fish and some little trash fish, but it's worth it to get out there and target those big doormats this time of the year on the nearshore reef. Also, the spade fish. One of the most fun fish are on those nearshore reefs right now. Grab up some jelly balls on your way out. You can find them, get them on a clothes hanger, and get those things down. Tease those fish up to the top. Light tackle, it's an incredible fight on these spade fish. You've seen my episode that I did for Fox Sports last year. It was a great time targeting these fish this time of the year. Get out there, you have a great time. This has been your Carolinas Report brought to you by the Dead Dog Saloon. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. Got it. He got it. <laughs> he came back and got it. Not much of a fish. Oh, sorry about that little buddy. I didn't mean to whop you. All right, well, we've still got bass working here at Darbone. There's just a little Boy, he's a fatty for a, a small fish like that. Back that little dude goes. Going to go to a quick break right here, but before we do, I want to mention where we're staying because the best place on the lake to stay, without a doubt, it's Darbone Point. And they've got uh, places for RVs, they've got a boat ramp, they've got a swimming pool. But the best thing about it is, I, I don't know what you call them, condos, cottages, whatever, but they are really nice, top end, fully appointed on the inside, satellite TV, fully equipped kitchens, a couple of bedrooms, big TVs. It's where we stay when we come here and it's where you ought to stay and there's all the information you can contact Kendall and all his folks, the information you see on your screen. Stay with us. Back to Darbone Lake, Louisiana. Right after Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Motor Guide, because accuracy matters. Lawrence Electronics, celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence. Find, navigate, dominate. And Exide Technologies, powering the world forward. Cool, he came out of there and ate it. Oh, and he swam in a bush. He came out of there and ate it. Oh, and he swam in a bush. He's still there. He's on around some of that grass. All right, hey everybody. Welcome back to the show. We're on Lake Darbone right now. There he comes. Ah, uh, he's not a monster or anything. All right, look at that. There's your, there's your little grassy chunk right there. Well, let me uh, explain just a little bit about how we're fishing right now. I want to show you where it right up on it. Look right here. Some real soft, dead looking stuff it grows in these big beds and these bass will roam the edges of it. What I'm doing is I'm pitching right down the edge of it. They'll bite a spinner bait, they'll bite a worm, but what I'm doing right now is swimming a little creature bait. This is a Jean LaRue rattling crawler. I'll show it to you up close at the end of the show, but it's got some little kicking legs on it and uh, it just kind of swims its way along like a frog and you're going to be fishing along the edge of all this grass and cover that you can see and I'm just pitching it out there and kind of swimming it along that outside edge and boy that one just came out and tattooed it. How about that? Fishing and Lake Report, time for you. This part of the program is brought to you by Visit Jacksonville. Northeast Florida offers great fishing, family fun beaches, top restaurants and resorts that are easy to get to and offer outdoor fun for everyone. So come on, visit Jacksonville. Well, Mississippi red fishing has really kicked off in the lower marsh areas along the coast. It's been really great around uh, the lower Pascagoula River and also in the Grapevine Bayou. 
area, which is a little bit to the west of the Pascagoula River. Uh, the incoming tide has been uh, best for this fishing, and there, there's lots of schools of redfish. These are slot fish, but you got to look for bait. When you find bait schools and two to four feet of water, small menhaden, a uh, little mullet, that sort of thing. Small crankbaits, uh, little shallow running crankbaits, real fast little darting lures, they're all over them. Plenty of spotted sea trout in that one to four pound range also are available around the uh, barrier islands along the coast of Mississippi and they're also in Biloxi Bay. Uh, offshore uh, red snapper season is open to stay open through September and they're catching uh, limit numbers as two fish per person. A big red snapper up to 20 pounds. Uh, these fish are in the uh, uh, state haven reefs uh, offshore uh, along the coast of Alabama. Uh, yellowfin tuna and blackfin tuna has been outstanding. Uh, they're catching these around the floater rigs in three to five thousand feet of water. That's way offshore. In southeast Georgia, it's sharks, sharks and more sharks. Lots of spinners and black tips. It's 150 pounds and they offer great fishing fun and the tarpon are going to be right behind them. Well that's it for the southeast coast. Get out in the water take a youngster with you when you go. This week's Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi Freshwater Report is brought to you by Southern Saltwater Fly Fishing Magazine. This destination-oriented e-zine covers South Atlantic and Gulf Coast from Maryland to Texas and the Caribbean Islands. Subscriptions are free at www.southernsaltflyfishing.com. Now even though it's getting steamy across Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi as the summer approaches, the fish are still active. You just have to pick out the right kinds of spots to target. Surprisingly, the crappie on Weiss Lake in Alabama are still feeding heavily right now. This 30,200 acre impoundment on the Coosa River is one of the best in the nation for numbers and some real slabs. Fish up to two pounds are taken regularly here. Trolling live minnows around brush piles on the lower lake is what works best, but that bait has to be within five feet of the cover to lure those fish out. The best spots are going to be in 12 to 14 feet of water along the old river channel. Now if the brush is creating a current break, when the water's flowing through this shallow reservoir, it's an even better location. Mississippi's namesake river is a good bet right now for some blue and channel catfish action this week. Try targeting the inside bends on the Mississippi River or along any sandbars. Up in northeast Georgia, the hybrid bass on Lake Hartwell on the Savannah River are being caught this week on blueback herring fished around mid-lake humps on long main lake points. Be sure to join Fox Sports Outdoors again next week, Thursday night at 6, or catch the repeat airing Sunday morning at 8.30. And you can always watch the latest episode in full HD on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Plus, catch up on all past episodes by clicking the archive button. And see lots of our how-to and product videos by selecting the how-to button. Join our online fishing community. Just click the like button on our Facebook page for access to daily posts with lots of fishing news, videos, and frequent giveaways. And stay up to date with all the latest fishing information and photos by following our Twitter feed. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than a boat, it's a tracker. Mercury Marine, go boldly. And Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. Welcome back everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro question. This week, Doug would like to know, if I'm only catching small catfish in an area, should I move or wait it out for a big one? For the answer, we ask trophy catfish guide, Chad Ferguson. If you're only catching smaller fish and you're fishing for channel catfish, sit on them, go ride them out. My grandfather told me one time when I was fishing for channel catfish to never leave feeding fish. And I think that's true in a lot of scenarios because a lot of times you really have to weed through those numbers to get to the larger fish. And the further south you go where we don't have very large populations of larger channel catfish, that's really gonna be true. Now where blue catfish are concerned, I will typically go out and look for larger fish if I'm not catching fish. If I'm into numbers and they're mostly smaller fish and I want to catch big fish, I'm gonna use my side scan sonar and the other technologies available to me and I'm gonna really get out there and pinpoint those larger fish so I can get right on top of them and sit on them to increase my odds of catching a big blue catfish. Thanks, Chad. If you have a question for one of the pros, visit our website, follow the Ask the Pro link on the right side of the page, and let us know. 
Now one of our viewers wins a new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. Hey everybody, we're back at Darbone Point, beautiful location right on the shores of Lake Darbone. And before we get to the Costa Catch of the Week winner for this week, I did want to give you just a quick little look around the inside of one of these cabins or lodges or rooms. I'm not sure what we call these, but it's a great place to stay. A little living area there, television, beautiful kitchen area here, washer and dryer back in the closet back there, big table for everybody to sit around for meals, a balcony to sit out, look at the lake and watch the sun go down. Just a great spot here, right here at Darbone Point at Lake Darbone. It's time right now for this week's Costa Catch of the Week winner. He is Daryl Grice of Simpsonville, South Carolina, showing off a 40 pound redfish he caught at Hunting Island State Park, South Carolina. If you'd like to be our next winner, just go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, click in the Costa Catch of the Week area, send us your big fish photo, and you could be our next winner. And you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles at their website. Just go back to the front page of our website and click on the Costa logo. It's there you'll see all of the 580 polycarbonate and glass lenses and all the beautiful and different frame styles that they have to offer, including the frame style I was wearing on this week's episode. It's called Prop. Next up, it's our gear feature, and we'll show you the gear to catch both crappie, the big ones like we caught here on Darbone, and the bass that we caught as well. Now for the crappie, we basically used one bait on the long lining technique that we showed you. This is the 1 8 ounce Bobby Garland Moglo jig head. We use several colors in that jig head, and on the back of that for the plastic trailer, we use the Bobby Garland stroller. The best two colors seem to be a pearl white color and a chartreuse. For the bass, we used one bait all day. It was the Jean LaRue Rattlin Crawler. We rigged it on a 1 8 ounce bullet or worm head weight a three-aught worm hook, an offset worm hook, and we rigged it Texas rigged and then swam it across those grass beds to catch the bass. Here's your quiz for the day. Everybody's heard the phrase, laughter is the best medicine. Who said that? Bet you didn't guess that it's King Solomon from the Bible. That's right, the quote actually comes from Proverbs 17.22. The actual quote says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Medical science has long proved that laughter produces a chemical in the human bloodstream that relieves stress. Now, there's a lot in our lives that's just not funny. We're bombed with very serious stuff every day of our lives. So we've got to take every opportunity to laugh, and not just to laugh, but laugh at ourselves. It would be good for you and me to make sure that the next time the joke is on us. And thanks for joining us from Louisiana. Until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.